<clears throat> Start the recording. Whoa. I don't know why it's doing that. Hi there. If you're watching this video, it means you've clicked on it. For those of you who may or may not know, uh, a good couple of weeks ago, I got a fantastic opportunity to travel out to an open house that was being hosted down at Fort Benning down in Georgia for the U.S. Armor and Cavalry Collection. Uh, this is a huge collection of incredibly rare, really, really cool American and otherwise tanks. Since it's on base in a fort, it is not typically open to the public, but there was an open house event on uh, the 29th and 30th of April. And reading the flyer, I saw that they were going to be holding a live fire demonstration in addition to this open house. I had to be there. I was prepared to go by myself. I asked a couple friends if they were interested in attending, but it was a bit short notice. And also, I don't really have any tank friends, so like nobody, nobody would have wanted to go with me. However, at the last minute, I actually managed to get my father on board. He reached out first and was like, hey, if you're gonna do this, you need a second man. And honestly, I'm glad because I, I looking back, I would not have been able to do this on my own because this was gonna start with an eight hour road trip to Georgia. I took a day off of work and uh, this is my experience. Although actually we start just before we're about to leave. Well, it is Friday morning, uh, seven, 27, so 7.30. We are about to head out for uh, Georgia. Not the best weather for uh, what we what we were hoping for for traveling, but the weather should be good tomorrow while we're there. Uh, so that's really what matters. I'm awake, it's raining, and I'm on my way. The drive to Georgia from Virginia wasn't actually that bad. My father and I were in great spirits, and before we left, we made a stop at Burger King and got some delicious Burger King breakfast sandwiches, and it was actually really nice. Uh, I love road trips. I'm a huge, huge fan of road trips. Uh, my father is too. And after a fun little eight-hour road trip, we made it to Atlanta. Uh, we stopped in our hotel and spent the night, where we were set to wake up early the next morning. Good morning. Uh, the lighting is terrible. Ugh. Hi. Still getting used to this whole vlogging thing. I'm not that good at it <laughs> yet. All the time. That's some, some scraps of tissue paper because I've been blowing my nose. Because <clears throat> I am slightly under the weather. I don't know, man. I have the worst luck with getting sick right when I'm about to do cool stuff. <clears throat> my voice might be a bit bad. But anyway, today is the day. We are going to go over to Fort Benning, uh, my father and I, and we are going to see it. And it is going to be very cool. We're going to have some breakfast here at the hotel and then uh, get out. Next stop, Fort Benning. Abrams, Abrams, Bradley's. That's awesome. Right. Cool, we found it. We get more close together. <gasps> Ooh, uh, that's a tank. Looks like another armored recovery vehicle. Oh, and that's an MBT-70? <gasps> Whoa, that's cool. <laughs> we're here, we're here, we're here, we're here. This is it. Here we are. Tonkus. So this is a T-55. This is a, it's probably one of my favorite Russian tanks actually, but. but what, are the, what are the, what are the, Yeah, so that's the mount for a, a Dishka anti-aircraft machine gun. So there's no machine gun in it now, but a machine gun would be put on there. Okay, you gotta pop out. Yeah, the loader. So this tube I think is probably for a deep water fording. So you would take this out and put it on your engine deck and it would act as a, like, uh, like, like, like a like, car, you know? Yeah. Coaxial machine gun I think would go right there because the loader's on that side. And then there's going to be your uh, ranging optics and stuff on here. They're huge. That's, what millimeter do you think that is? This is 100. And I think it's rifled, I'm pretty sure. Uh, I don't think they switched to uh, smooth bore until the T62. So that's an M60. This is an M48. This is basically, this is early and then that's later. They like, they go from this to that. Uh, late 50s into the early 60s. 
I wish I had all the engine specs of all the American Cold War tanks memorized, but I don't, unfortunately. Have your uh, range finders on the sides of the turret and such. So that, that makes this an M60 A3, I think. And this is something, I don't know, I don't know what this is. It's American for sure. I might be stumped, boys. I'm not sure what this one is. Whatever it is, it's that. Yeah, it's, it's got the pot belly, the M48, but you can definitely tell because of the, the rear, the way the turret is shaped, but then the cannon is huge. And it's got a bunch of applique. Oh wait, this is the thing with the oscillating, this has an oscillating turret. This has the, um, oh God, what the frick is this thing called? Oh God, I don't know the name of this thing. The whole turret sits on this like bottom thing. And there's a trunnion here that goes all the way through. And that entire thing can rotate up and down rather than like just the gun going up and down. I don't remember what this thing is called though or why they built it. But yeah, it's clearly for self-propelled artillery of some kind. T29, I could be wrong. Oh, this thing is freaking fucking huge. Look at this thing, dude. The track extensions as well. That's epic, you love to see it. Range finders or, um, yeah, I think those are range finders. I could be wrong. Cold War vehicles are not my specialty, so we're not gonna get a lot until we get inside. Comb. The comb is not unique to the Sherman people. Stop calling it the Sherman comb. It's not, it's just, it's just a comb. Hey, I was right. T29 E5, E3, E5. Tank heavy, yep. This is like, yeah, late 1950s. Or, no, sorry, late 1940s, I'm sorry. Let's see if I've still got it, so. Yeah, so this is a vertical vault spring suspension. This is what Harry Knox I was telling you about, the vertical vault spring. So you can look underneath, there's literal, um, volume springs in here. There's two of them. There's one here and one here and they'll compress. So as these come up, the arms actuate them and that these springs will compress and it'll like handle that and push them back down. These are just return rollers, um, to help keep the track uh, over the top. So this is like is a special variant. No, this is the for engine maintenance yeah. access door. Um, this would have had the R975 continental radial engine. So this would have had like a literal airplane engine inside of it. Wow, the first one. Yep. Pleasure, sir. Nice to meet you. Yep. Of course, I found me at the Sherman. Of course, <laughs> I knew. I was like, he's going to be at a Sherman. <laughs> I'm trying to see if I still got it with, um, that's a low bustle, obviously. Honestly, one of the craziest parts of this entire trip, I genuinely met fans. It, it was so weird as a YouTuber being recognized. It was still a pretty surreal experience. So shout out to everyone in the Discord or otherwise who uh, came up to say hi. It was... It was really, really cool. Shout out to, to this guy in particular who actually had the balls to just kind of, he just followed us around the whole time. <laughs> You'll see him throughout this entire video. Like he, he stuck with us. Shout out, shout out to that guy. Uh, my dad said you were really cool and he, he enjoyed your company. <laughs> so uh, yeah, that's pretty awesome for him. That, I cannot believe this. I'm sorry, but I have to touch it. <sighs> So, so thick and huge gun. So this has like a 128 millimeter yeah, In the cannon. movies they said shoot it in the back in the butt. No. Oh, th yeah, this thing's easily like 60, 70 tons probably. At least 70 tons. Does that mean anything to you? Oh, uh, Jagdtiger Os B. So Os B is like the variant, but yeah, it's a Jagdtiger. This is like thick. It's like, that's literally the width of my freaking hand, dude. That's, that's a real Jagdtiger, man. That's real. Yeah. Jagd Panther. Guys, see ya. That right there. That's for the driver. The gunner is gonna have periscopes that peek up out of the top like a submarine, but um, otherwise, yeah, that's it. Thick, thick, thick armor, man. Thick armor all over this thing. Oh, ho, ho, yeah. Oh, yes. Car. Taking an old Model T and sticking the marble on it. Pretty much. So, and you can see the suspension and stuff is derived. You can see it's very similar to this. So this, this was like a revolutionary tank. Because beforehand you had those big ass Mark V's and shit yeah. that were huge. And I know, I remember these things could turn and they'd take like five of them. Because you have a turret finally. Right. This is an American licensed produced version. You can tell because of the gun shield. <laughs> I can't believe this. You got your shovel, your fording tools. Exhaust. It's so small. It's so small compared to compared to a Samwa. It's actually not. It's it's not that much shorter than a Samwa, which is really weird. Look at this little guy. Look at this fucking dude. Look at this dude. God, he's so cramped in there. And his head is basically interfacing with the fucking cupola. 
There are so many tanks. I genuinely don't know how long this video is going to be because I'm going to rant for like 20 minutes on each and every individual tank that's here. So I don't know what I'm going to do. <laughs> I already covered the Samwa in Tank Enthusiast Reacts to Postscriptum, so just go watch that video. Samwa, Panzer II. They're like, they're like we're getting ready to go to war. Yeah, so this is, this is still when Germany was pretending that they were building tractors, but they were actually building tanks. Yeah. Um, this is a Panzer II. It's got a 20 millimeter autocannon in the front and a machine gun on the side. Small. Very lightly armored, very small, very fat. Th this was like the bastion of Blitzkrieg. Stuart, hot, dude, they got a hot go. Oh my God, dude. Oh my God, oh my God. From a freaking kid in a candy store. Still got the MG34 on this. Just so awesome. If you guys saw the Canada vlog, you know how much I love grabbing the guns. God, that's real. Like, this is a real, like, like I don't think I could convey. This is a real Panzerkampfwagen aus F, Panzerkampfwagen 2 aus F, that I am touching with my hand. This is history. This is real. This is a tank. That early VVSS. Look at that early, early VVSS. Oh, my God. Still got the machine guns. Oh, my God. I love it. And the, oh, it's still got the hull machine guns. Yes. I have to touch it. Sandbags. Twin machine guns. For the bow. Holy shit. Oh my god. It's the T4. This is the Walter J. Christie T4. I mean, it's not the Walter Christie T4 because Walter Christie was kicked out of the project this time, but it's the T4. It's a Christie suspension American tank. This is actually a real Christie T4. Machine gun only. Uh, Machine gun only. We had a lot of different designs. Like, how many different iterations of designs? Like, yeah, we, we, them all, but, like, we did a lot of different stuff. Yeah, like, I have no doubt that the Christie springs on this go all the way up to here. I, I have no doubt in my mind that they're that big. The other guys especially. So, so this is the joint, Harry Knox and Christie. Yeah. These are the two competitors. You can tell the difference between Well, these are simpler. Also, what's so nice about these, this entire unit, it's a bogey so it can be taken off for ease of maintenance. Yeah. For these, if you want to replace a, a suspension spring, you have to open up the whole side of the tank, and that's a nightmare. Yes, sir. The T4. No, no, it's fine, dude. Would have had the 37 on, up top, along with the bow machine gun, or sorry, a uh, coaxial machine gun. It's got two machine guns on either side. And you so American tanks on three is obviously height. Height, for very machine gun focused. Yeah. Also, yeah. you'd have two machine guns here. Yeah, yeah in the hole. So th think about that. You have a coaxial, two here, and two there. So this is, again, 30s? Yeah, this is late 30s. And which one did we enter, did we start with? The M3. But this turned into this for like, okay, yes. when, we go to, uh, when we go to war or whatever, I think what was the first place, uh, Africa? Yeah, North Africa. So remember when I said how the British were begging for tanks? Yeah. And all we had was this? Yeah. And we wanted to find a way to get the 75 yeah. into a tank? but we couldn't develop the turret in time, yeah. so we took an M2. It's this, okay. it's literally this, that's, right? So that's the chassis. It's the chassis, and then stuck the 75 yeah. in the hull. Which what took the place of that rotating gun area. Yeah. yeah. Look how tall. I, all right, this is my, this is eye level, guys. Eye level. Look how freaking tall it is. It's huge. The hull is way taller than me. This tank is huge. Freaking massive. Absolutely massive. This is the first video you're ever seeing by me. I promise I don't sound like this all the time. We'll start with this one. So, wait a minute. so we might rank from the lead. This, right, the brand to the lead to this. To this. And you can see it's mo it's a lot like it's about as tall. The suspension, the tracks, okay, a lot of it, right. the transmission. Like yeah, if you look at compare the two, um, there are a lot of similarities. Yeah, there's the guns more different. And that, that's the beauty of American production, is all they're doing is taking components that they already know work from other tanks and rearranging them to build better tanks. This is an early model. So small hatch with direct vision ports. Um, the small M34 gun mantlet, the M34A1 gun mantlet is the bigger one. 75, that's fine. Early turret, no applique armor. Um, no, applique armor doesn't mean jack squat. It was supposed to be produced at the factory, but if it wasn't, it was put on in motor pools when they went to Europe but sometimes it wasn't. So applique armor doesn't mean jack shit. Early cupula, the split open hatches, small, uh, low bustle. I don't know why it took me so long to get that. This is an A3. It's got those giant double door engine, ha engine decks. So this is an early model A3. Um, I don't know the production dates. I'm gonna guess 42. Like, I'm gonna guess this is an original, which is cool. It's super cool to see. I can touch an early model Sherman A3. 
sprocket. I know you guys love me when I look at sprockets, but this is um, a generic sprocket. This was used by a lot of different factories, so I can't tell you who made this one, unfortunately. It's still really, really cool to see. It is German. Wow. Oh, that's the Tiger 1. It's the Tiger. I'm going to touch a Tiger tank, guys. Here I go. It is honestly hard to convey how I felt in this moment, standing next to a real tiger tank. This is a real tiger. When you're in the moment and you're, you're standing next to history like this, it's moments like this that really remind me why I love. I love tanks. And what can I say, guys? I love tanks. This is a real tiger tank. Sorry, I just got told not to lean on it. I was gonna say I'm too excited. I can't, I can't stop. I want to get inside it. Yep, this was the main deal. This was, this was, this was the main deal. Yeah. So this is an Elsf G. You can tell because it has the longer gun. Yeah. So early ones had a shorter gun. This would have been the Sherman's direct competitor. So we made all the Shermans. They made all the Panzer fours. And yeah. Was like deal. Yep. Look how. So look how the engine is. So that's the transmission. Oh. The engine's gonna be in the back. Okay, so that one will get hot. Well, yeah. Get a hot. Oh yeah, this is yeah, this this interior is all rusted out. But so that's Panzer III. It's the 88. This is the breech, so it opens sideways, and then you stick a shell up in it. Yes, sir. Panzer III. This one is an Ausf J, <clears throat> but that's a Panzer III, man. That's incredible. That's awesome. I did see a Panzer III in Canada, but it was a reproduction. This is a real, it's a genuine Panzer III. Fantastic. T-34. Um, also, Christie suspension. Oh. Same thing. Walter J. Christie was far more successful in Russia than he was in America. Isn't that crazy? So I will say this is a nice sleek bottom. Yeah. So now we see the main, this is the main bread and butter, right? Yeah, definitely of the Russians. Yeah. Martyr 2 and a Stug. A Stumgeschutz. Stumgeschutz uh, 3, obviously, because Stumgeschutz 4 don't exist. You can't tell me that they do. Shut up. Stuck uh, G, you can tell it's a G because of the superstructure on the, um, that, that exact, like that buff out right there, that extra plate. I've got slightly confusing guy to the stove, check that video out. Um, it's got the pig nose mantlet. So in all ways, this is a late war model, probably. At the very, le at the very least, like a late 1943, probably. I know I'm supposed to be the expert, but I'm also off the cuff here. Still amazing. Uh, Montreal Locomotive Works. So this is a Grizzly. That is a Grizzly specific. I think, I think my brightness is dying because my camera battery is dying. I'm gonna switch to my phone. A real M10. I can't even fit the whole thing in the frame. I'm backed up against the Greyhound. <laughs> That's a real M10. Fantastic. Yep. Interleave road wheels. This is a Panther A as well. It's an early model. I can't stop touching them. I cannot stop touching them. I've switched to my phone, by the way, because my camera's almost out of battery. I need to buy an extra battery for this thing. Oh my God. Don't drop the phone. And Firefly. I'll get to this in a second. I'll get to this in a second. Is it British made and sent to Canada or vice versa? British made sent to Canada. As far as I know, no Canadians ever made fireflies. Except for those, there's one British Firefly Grizzly. They were used. This one is the special M4A2, 
with Firefly turret. So it's an A2, so you're not having the space bogeys of the A4. So this is gonna have the twin diesel in it. That's an A2. Also, uh, exhaust. That's an A2 exhaust with the Firefly 17 pounder. Actually, it's got a Firefly turret. The whole turret is from a Firefly, but the hull is a, is a standard A2. Um, they did not actually make any, any Fireflies on the A2. This is like a weird Frankenstein. The T28, the super heavy, the tank, the man itself. Whoa, God, that's rough. Wow. All I know about this tank is what everyone else knows about it. It was designed to break through the Siegfried line. They only ever built two. This is the only one remaining. And um, it was lost for 27 years and they found it in a field in Virginia. So, hey, represent VA. Look at that, like that, that's a solid seam for where this thing splits and you can detach the second set of tracks. HVSS is still gonna be HVSS. Same cupola as what would be found on a Sherman. You know, they're reusing parts. They're reusing what they can. I don't know what engine it would have had. If I had to guess, probably the Ford, the Ford AA. And this is a once, this is a once in a lifetime vehicle. Like you don't, you don't see this anywhere. T28. Amazing. We have stumbled across an M20 and comb. The comb is not unique to the Sherman. Stop calling it a Sherman comb. It's just a comb. Shut up. T23. We like the T23. T29. Uh, a lot of big tanks. This is obviously, this tank would suck, but the turret was good. So they plunked this turret onto the Sherman, made the 76 millimeter Sherman. Good days all around. I'm, I'm kind of trying to go quick. Like I promise I'm getting time to uh, enjoy these tanks off camera but I do want to make sure that I get a little bit for everybody. Jagdpanzer 470 and a Hetzer. I did see a Hetzer in Canada, so I'm not too crazy about that one, but this is cool, uh, Jagdpanzer 4. Glad to say that I've touched one. Let me touch. Oh. That's your driver's position right there. He's got all of his dials. That's the elevation, that's like the spring elevation mechanisms for his hatch up top. You're looking at all of his uh, periscope stuff. That's like where the, the back of the shells would have been and they would have come across. You got your mechanism right there for uh, opening the cupola. Same, I think it's the same mechanism as on the Panther. The one that like you have to turn it and crank it and open it. It's like a, it's like a whole thing. Really cool, King Tiger. You know, this, is, this, is, this is incredible. These things are tall, they're big, they're loud, they're mean, they're tigers. Schwimming wagon. It's basically a boat, which means I hate it. This around the neighborhood. I would not, because it's a boat. My voice is sounding really, really sexy right now. Churchill, Churchill, Crocodile as well. I do believe there's a Mark 8 based on the turret and the hatch, but um, fucking Churchill, man, that's awesome. And an A3 Sherman, Hellcat as well. I just finished describing this to my dad, but uh, yeah, Hellcat, really cool to see and to touch in real life. This vehicle had the single best kill death ratio of any American tank in World War II. We've ditched the VBSS like on the M10. Now we have the torsion bars because this isn't built on a Sherman like the M10 was. Duplicated driver control. So there's another driver stuff in the passenger seat. So the, uh, the passenger can take over if the driver dies. Was designed to take both the Continental Radial from the Sherman and the Ford GAA, like in case they needed either one could be used. As far as I know, they were never produced with the Ford GAA. They always had the Continental in them, as far as I know. And then 76 millimeter, same gun that's in the new Shermans. Jumbo with the 76. This turret is not the T23 turret, even though it looks like it. It's built to a similar mold, but it's not the T23 turret. It's thicker armor, mantlet's huge. This one's a 76. Um, there were no jumbos that were ever built in the factory with the 76. If you see period photos of jumbos with 76 millimeter guns, they're all field mods. Um, it was done a lot, but jumbos, jumbos left the factory with 75s. Pershing, love the Pershing. I think it's a very cool looking tank. I wish it was the Super Pershing though. Right next to an IS-3, which is freaking incredible that they have an IS-3. This thing is awesome. I don't know jack squat about late war, cold war Russian tanks, so I'm not gonna say much about this one. It's an IS-3. This one's for all the War Thunder players out there. ASU-57, this one is tiny, lightly armored, I think it was supposed to be an air deployable tank. Someone on my uh, Russian tank history can correct me, but this is the ASU-57. It is small, it is compact, it is light. Funny little guy, isn't he? AMX-13, oscillating turret design, as we all know. Um, 
I don't know. It's an, AM, it's an AMX 13. What do you want? You know, what do you want me to say? Smoke launchers. Uh, that thing, whatever, whatever that does. Uh, you got the thingy right here. A couple of doodads and dangle bops over here. Uh, you got the box. Uh, that's the box that does that thing that it does. 90 millimeter gun, if I'm not mistaken. Later upgraded to a 105. I did not expect to see an S tank here, boys. This is a tree, a real, real tree. Now let's be honest, if you're watching my channel, you're a tank nerd, and if you're a tank nerd, you know what this thing is. It's the S-Tank. This is real. I don't know anything about the S-Tank or its development history or its production or whatever. Um, all I know is that it's, an, it's, a, it's, a, it's a thing that exists. I feel honored to see this in real life, really. It's amazing. Abrams, an actual Abrams tank. There are not very many Abrams in museums, right? Because it's an Abrams, it's pretty modern. You don't see these around. And I get to see one. It's big, it's tall. The engine deck is as tall as me. Up to top of my head on the engine deck. Big headlights, you fucking put your fist in those. Jesus, huge. We all know the Abrams. Everyone knows the Abrams. Now, somebody in the comments is like, actually, that's the XM, blah, blah, blah. Shut up, it looks like an Abrams. I don't know shit about modern tanks, fuck you. I'm a World War II guy. It's damn near close to an Abrams. Yeah, okay, yeah. XM1, blah, 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 blah. shut up, it's an Abrams. Cry, cry, cope and seethe. This whole collection is like, incredible. This is the, uh, I forget what this thing is called. I guess it's a Block 3, I don't know. But this is basically an Abrams with a fully autonomous turret. So there's no crewmen in the turret. They all sit down in the hall. It was a test bed in the 80s. Didn't really work out, but they made it. It's cool. Yeah, they didn't make it. So Russian T-14 runs on a similar concept. I personally think that's the direction that tanks are heading, is uh, a, a crewless turret. Everyone down in the hall. People can disagree with me on that, but uh, T-14's doing it. Abrams X wants to do it. They did it on here. Yeah, they showed that it didn't really work, but I think the technology just wasn't there at the time. You can see the Abrams lineage, kind of, but overall, I think it looks a lot different than like a normal Abrams. It's cool, and I get to see it and touch it. I can't believe it. It's, it's, it's incredible. And this is it. The Abrams is a real, in service today, Abrams. This is not a museum piece. This is a service vehicle. This is actually in the military, but they're bringing it in for today. It's huge. It's, it's, it's long and it's wide. It's not that tall, actually, but it's very wide. It's, or, sorry, very long. Um, stowage. Uh, this would fold in to cover the sprocket. When the Abrams was first built, this uh, little folding door was a just a full block like the rest of them. But when that door was closed and covering it, they couldn't get to the sprocket and they would find that mud and stuff would get caught up and get behind that panel. In later models, they did that cutout on it. A lot of crews would do it themselves. They would just get a, a, a grinder and just cut out that mark themselves. And then uh, later on, they put it into production to add that cutout. So it was easier to work on the sprockets. It's, it's, got, it's got a different feel than all the other tanks. It really does. It feels like, it's got like a weird, like rubbery almost like texture to it. It's very weird, but very cool. It's getting away from the main battle tank and the light. Again. This is basically a really light Abrams. Yeah, it looks like um, it's yep. like MPF. So the chance of the main battle tank is not no, not quite. This is the MPF. This is America's newest tank. It's got all these bolts on it. Very odd. Oh, it's got bags. It's got stowage on it. The same uh, non-stick stuff on here. Whoa. That's an engine. That is awesome. The MPF. I really, really did not think I'd get to see one in real life. But like that, this, that, this is the, the MPF. This is brand new. You don't see these in museums, man. This is the MPF. It's the real deal. Now, our timing was pretty much perfect. Right when we got to the end of the collection, it was about time for people to start heading on the buses and heading out to the live fire demonstration they were hosting just a couple miles down the road. And if I thought this collection was a show, I was in for a treat.
And just like that, everything we came here for was over with. Uh, after that live fire demonstration, my father and I made our way back to Atlanta. Uh, we had dinner at a fantastic steakhouse, stayed the night in our hotel, woke up the next morning, and we were back on the road. But we managed to make it home safe and sound. And so, that's about it for my trip down to Georgia. Uh, it was pretty much exactly what it seemed like. It was a drive down there, take a look at tanks, see this live fire demo, and then drive right back up. Oh, I literally didn't spend more than a day, like a day and a half total time in Atlanta, uh, but it was a lot of fun. This was an incredibly awesome experience, and I hope to do more stuff like this. Canada Vlog, now this. Um, anytime I go to an incredible tank experience in real life, I'll be sure to record it. So um, this is kind of a, a simpler, more thrown together video, um, as I'm sure you can kind of tell. Uh, I'm really working hard on this video that's gonna be released after this one, which is a tank documentary on the T-34. Uh, this is a video that I've been working on for a very, very long time. It's gonna happen. So after this video, the next upload that you should keep your eyes out for is this T-34 documentary video. I'm very, very excited about it. And uh, once that video is done, we're gonna be, I'm gonna be full hog on fun, good content. I promise you. Anyways, my name has been Ender320. This has been my trip to Georgia and Fort Benning. If I saw you there or you saw me there, it was a pleasure meeting you. And uh, hopefully if I ever do more fun museum stuff in the future, I can meet even more of you guys. Um, Cause this was a lot of fun. This was, this was an incredible trip. It was a once in a lifetime thing. And I'm really happy that I got to go do it. There was no way I wasn't. There was no way I was going to miss out on an experience like this. Yeah, thank you so much for watching. And uh, I'll see you in the next video.